where we are speaking to the great and the good of the UAE's IPO scene down here at the summit. Joining us now live is a legend of business here in Dubai, Fadi Gandor, Executive Chairman of Wamda Capital. Fadi, ahlan wa sahlan, good to see you. Pleasure to be here. Now, if you're new in Dubai and you need an introduction to Fadi Gandor, he is truly an icon of business here. He IPO'd his company before it was cool to IPO your company here in Dubai. Back in 2005, he listed Aramex, the logistics company that he founded on the Dubai financial market. Before that, in the 1990s, he listed it on the NASDAQ in the United States, and now he runs Wamda Capital, which is a venture capital and tech investment fund. So Fadi, as, a, as someone who's been there, done that, bought the T-shirt, what do you make of the recent IPO boom here in the UAE? Is it a flash in the pan or something more substantial? No, I think it's, it's very substantial. It's essential. And uh, it was about time for, for that to happen so that you can have depth in the market, uh, distribution of uh, the shareholding across the population. I mean, these are very essential things so that you can have a really serious... Uh, financial markets, uh, and since Dubai is a center, it was uh, natural for them to do that. And the UAE in general, not only Dubai. I mean, there is a race in the region, as you know, for IPOs and to deepen the markets and to get foreign investors interested in these markets. They need depth and they need li liquidity. Without IPOs and the big ones, you can't have uh, a, a serious uh, uh, financial market and, and serious uh, foreign investors in your markets. So give us a bit of a history lesson. I'm reading a story from Gulf News. November 2004, Aramex plans an IPO in Dubai. <laughs> it was the next year that you actually did list yes. on the market. How different was it then? Talk us through that experience. Well, you know, at that time, the laws were a bit uh, very stringent. We, what we did, I mean, believe it or not, we took a company called Arab International Logistics. We couldn't take Aramex because we couldn't value the company as such. Their, the, the share was, uh, price was, had to be one dirham. Uh, and, and oh, every was IPO was a dirham, wasn't it? You remember that, Brandy? The law, every yeah. IPO was you a dirham. It IPO. was a rule. The, the, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't book build yeah. uh, at that time. So Gosh. the valuation was uh, not going to be what we wanted. So what we did is we, we IPO'd. It's like a SPAC. You IPO uh, uh, a company called Arab International Logistics, and that company raises the money and went and acquired Aramex. And we couldn't talk about it at that time. Don't say that. Arab international logistics is really Aramex. So it was a different world altogether. And, and the market was just uh, going crazy at that time. Uh, you know, the city was being built. Uh, there was f flush of cash. Uh, debt was incredible. So everybody was pouring into these IPOs. You know, our share price went from one dirham to seven dirhams in six weeks, <laughs> believe it or not. For no good reason. I mean, we had a fantastic company, but it was not going to be worth seven dirhams after six weeks. Uh, different times. Different times. Today, I'm looking at the Arabic share price, three and a half dirhams a share. It is a very su successful thing. Three and a half thing. dirhams a share today is, because we distributed uh, uh, bonus shares over the years, is seven dirhams, actually. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Like what, 12 years later? <laughs> and that's good to know. And you've just stepped down from the board, actually, of Aramex. I, I have. mean, you stepped back from day-to-day -day operations many years ago. I have. So, but let's talk about what the, what going forward. Because what we'd like to see is exits here on, on the stock market. Yes. It's great to see Salic and Dewa yes. privatizations. Yes. You're with Wamda Capital now, and for the past 10 years have been investing in technology. Right. You were an early investor in Karim. You did yes. very well out of yes. that. You were an early investor in, for example, Tabby, the yes. buy now, pay later company. And, and the all, but the exit for Kareem was a trade sale. They were bought by Uber. Right. You, you know, Soup.com was bought by Amazon. Right. We haven't seen a tech exit yet on the stock market in the right. way we would in the US. Yes. What has to change for that to happen? Well, you know, I've, I've been a proponent of that for, for the longest period of time. Uh, we, uh, uh, the companies that come out from the region need to have uh, many options for exits. For, I mean, exits are for investors, really, not for, and partly management. But you need to, these companies to stay. A Kareem needs to stay a Kareem, not become an Uber. A Souk needs to stay a Souk, not become uh, an Amazon. And to do, be able to do that, at that time, I, I think the laws are changing, you could not take a tech company that is not profitable on the stock exchange in any parts of this region because you needed three years of profitability and all sorts of other different uh, restrictions. So 
Uh, they need to change that. And if they don't change that, we're going to continue to have our companies either IPO in the West, like I did in back in 1997, like Angami did uh, on NASDAQ instead of being listed here. So if we want our companies to stay here, to stay independent like Aramex, you know, this is its 40th year of being an independent company and the daughter of the region, uh, we need to change the laws and allow them to do that. And, and that's the best way for, uh, for, for people to have access, in my view, because it's a double benefit. The country benefits, the region benefits, the founders continue to run their businesses as they found them, uh, and investors find ways to exit. Is that not what the N NASDAQ growth market is going to allow companies to do? Well, they, they do allow that. The problem with the NASDAQ market is that there's no depth of liquidity over there. So when you, you, can, you might be able to exit, but there is, there's not going to be much trading after that. So people are not enticed to do that. The laws already allow you to actually do that on the NASDAQ exchange here. But, but the FM is where, uh, or ADX is where the liquidity is, and we need to find, uh, they need to change the laws so that they can allow for these tech companies to happen here. Last question. Last question, Fadi. What's the hot sector for 2023? Is it fintech? Is it edutech? Is it health tech? It's continue. Well, health tech is con will, will continue. It's just starting here. I mean, globally, it is happening. And certainly fintech. There's no question about it. The regulators need to also continue to work on making sure that fintech happens in the region. Fadi Gandor is the founder of Aramex. He's the chairman of Wamda Capital. He's here at the MENA IPO Summit. Fadi, it's always a great pleasure to talk to you. Appreciate your time this morning. Shukran Jazeela. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dubai Eye 103.8. Join the conversation.